The Darien Athletic Foundation is proud to present high school girls varsity soccer. Live from Connor Field in New Canaan. It's the Darien Blue Wave taking on the New Canaan Rams. Welcome into our DAF Media Network broadcast. I am Damian Andrew alongside the Darien Boys soccer coach John Bradley and coach a uh, crisp fall afternoon. Beautiful weather and Darien taking on its arch rival New Canaan. Yeah, beautiful day over here. Perfect conditions, actually. The grass field's looking very nice. John, I know you play New Canaan tomorrow. This is a big rivalry. This is one of the bigger rivalries in the state of Connecticut in all sports. Yeah, I think, again, it's a, it's a like most high school rivalries, a lot of the kids know each other. Like I said, I just went through the New Canaan roster and a whole bunch of the kids have all played together at Premier. So I think this is going to be an interesting first 10, 15 minutes with both teams feeling each other out. Yeah. It looks to me today, um, it looks to me like Katie Rams is not playing today. I know she hurt her knee. I'm trying to see over the computer. Yeah, it looks like she's starting on the bench today. Katie Ramsey uh, comes into this game 19 goals this season. That is an impressive stat to say the least. Ellen Harnish with 15 goals for the Blue Wave, but it has been uh, quite a season for head coach Lee Parsons and the Blue Wave 9-2 and 1 coming into this rivalry game with the Rams. Yeah, they've had a very good uh, very good season. Again, it's a tough stretch of games they're in and they had a great result Monday against Staples. Today, as I said, it's going to be kind of a different game because a lot of these kids are familiar with each other. But it looks like Dariana in their normal formation. They'll be looking to find Ellen's feet up top. Ellen Harnish, number 13 for the Blue Wave. You mentioned that win over Staples. That was a big win. Last time you and I spoke, Darianne head coach Lee Parsons said, we're a little banged up right now. It was prior to the Fairfield Ward win. He goes, we've got to find a way to grind out some wins here. And they certainly have done that. They get the big 3-2 win over Ward, and then they get that win over Staples, a draw in between with Fairfield Ludlow. But that's a pretty good effort yeah. the last three games for well, them. Well, it's more the players, the players that have stepped in um, have performed at a very high level, like Sophie Cortellisi, Olivia Yu, Nell Niffin stepped in at right back, and the team hasn't missed a beat. That's what I said. I think when we went way back to the first game of the season, I said depth will make a big difference because in this league you you can't be successful without at least 17 or 18 solid players, and that that's definitely helped Darian, giving the ball away a little bit too easily there. I think that looked like Emma Shoes take it. Emma, Emma Shu on the run. Is a ve she's a very, very uh, dangerous freshman. Only very, very a, good. With that's, a, that's the thing that stands out about her. Only a freshman playing on the varsity. Some young players on this New Canaan team. She's a great player. She reads the game very well. Quick. Can play with her back to goal, which is a rare attribute for most girls. Most girls need to be facing forwards. So she's going to be very, very dangerous today because if she gets a step in behind our defense, she's going to cause some problems. Julia Azamek uh, will That's take great, the corner. Great corner. Well defended. And Darianne's defense clears it away. Nice defensive effort there by the Blue Wave, John. On yeah, again, set piece. most of those, as I said, uh, Emily Denunzio makes sure everyone's picked up and marked, and she does a great job of winning every last ball. I think you saw there, she just won the header. Chrissy Fiore so focused heading into this game. Lee Parsons was uh, taking some shots on goal in, in the pregame. And I said to Chrissy and Lee, I said to Chrissy, I said, you know, this guy played professional soccer over in England. She didn't crack a smile or anything. She was just focused on what she needed to do. Sto stone face, you, you get a smile, yeah. you get a smile every other day. <laughs> That's a good turn there, if we can just find fit. Again, those balls were a little too difficult. To play that ball 40 yards across the field, again, I know Leah Mike will have stressed that. That ball's got to go into Ellen's feet. Again, that, that's the same thing again. We, we, we're stressing it a lot with the boys that 
this isn't this isn't track, right? So you want to do your best work when you've got the ball. The most difficult part of this game is when you give the ball away so easily, you don't have to defend again. So Darian had two chances there. But right, Nukane, that's unlucky, but did a good job there of finding Emma Shu's feet. If you can find feet and possess the ball, you don't have to worry about chasing. And you find that the longer a game goes, the more worn down teams get if you hang on to the ball. You mentioned the Darian uh, boys soccer team. Uh, coming off a big 1-0 win over Staples. That is what you call a quality win, John. Yeah, so we've been telling people we've been playing well. We're, we're a young team. Uh, yesterday we thoroughly deserved the win. We were unlucky our last game at Ward. And it, it keeps the season alive because the kids know that for us the, the playoffs have started already. If we keep winning, we can make the postseason. If we don't get results in games, then that's the end of the season for us. But we thoroughly deserved yesterday's win. Looks like we're going to use two balls for this throw in. I think Natalie Bravo will be aiming to hit Ellen. It's a great throw. Ellen Harnish fighting for the ball. And it's going to be a little interesting just the way both teams are lined up in the same formation with one forward. New Canaan it looks like a playing a 4-5-1 as well. New Canaan is coached by Rich Hickson in his second season as the Rams head coach came over from Brian McMahon after three seasons there coaching the Senators. Nice English chap. I had the chance to meet very, him before the game. Very, very fine gentleman, Mr. Hickson. I asked him what he thinks of this Darian squad, and he said, Well, they're tall, they're fast, and they play well together. He goes, we'll have our work cut out for us this afternoon. Last year, Darianne shut out New Canaan three to nothing in Darianne. Bravo, the throw in. And that's what we'll be looking for, as I said, even to win that corner. Good solid keeper in goal for New Canaan as well. Jordan Patterson. Jordan Patterson, the junior. What they'll be doing now, it said you can see that they're looking to block her vision. Bravo will take the corner kick here. And there'll be a lot of movement in the next couple of minutes. First corner for the Blue Wave. Was that the first corner or the second corner? First corner. First, yeah. First and corner, I wouldn't yeah. even really count that as a corner because yeah. Natalie can do much better than that. It happens sometimes. But again, I, th I think the difficulty, they're going to be looking to get Emma Shoot in behind if they can. But again, the difficulty they're going to have is that the Darian centre backs are, out are outstanding with Anna and Emily. So unless Emma Shoe decides to come down the wings, I think it's going to be a difficult day for New Canaan going forwards. Like again, I think. Emma Shu, good player, young, won't really realise what she's up against, which can actually work in her favour. That's good work there by Nukainen. And that's what I was talking about a minute ago. That was a great one too, getting the ball out wide. I think that's where they're going to be looking to try and exploit Darian if they can. We'll see if they can stick to that. So another uh, corner opportunity here for the Rams. Julia Azamek, the senior, number 21, will take the corner. That's a good ball into the box. Very, very difficult balls to defend. It's another good ball back in. Chrissy Fiore back in goal for the Blue Wave, the senior keeper. Has had quite a season, eight shutouts in all. Fiore had 12 saves in that 1-0 win over Staples earlier in the week. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's it's not the performance and how you do it. It's a, Sports is about grinding out wins. And it, it the other day, Darian got a great goal from Ramsey. 
And then it was similar to a boxing match. Staples kept coming and coming, but just they just couldn't score. Lee, Lee and Mike had the Darian team set up in a a way to take away Staples' strengths. They kept Staples to a lot of shots from distance, which will never bother Fiore. It's a good pick up there from Lucane. I think the Emma's pace here is going to cause problems. Well covered there by Denunzio. Bergwall in the corner, and that's out of bounds. But again, in these 1v1 battles, I can't see Emma Shu getting much change out of Emily or Anna, so I think they're going to have to, again, keep pumping the ball down the wings and look to get crosses in. I think Rich will have been telling them that because he has, he's a very good tactical coach and he'll understand that if there's a, an area you don't want to keep going, it's straight down the middle. Again, another cross by New Canaan. I think we've, all, we've already seen their plan is to get the ball up to Emma Shu, get the wide players supporting her. Again, like I was stressing a few minutes ago, Darian's got to do a better job. Ilana has actually had a very good season this year. But again, she'll be disappointed there. She's got to find Ellen's feet rather than give it back to New Canaan. Of course, Ilana, Ilana Dolan, the junior for the Blue Wave. She's been very impressive the last few games. When Anora Brown went out, she stepped into centre midfield. And she's really, really... We're about 12 minutes into this uh, game between Darian and New Canaan. Rivalry matchup in the FCAC. Darian comes into this one 9 2 and 1. New Canaan 5 3 and 3. Darian beat New Canaan last year 3 0. I can't see this being a 3 0 game today. Again, both teams feeling each other out. New Canaan have had a good start today. I think the win against McMahon has given them some confidence. Boy, I tell you, whenever you and I sit in on one of these DAF media broadcasts, do we get uh, the weather right, huh? I mean, we it get is perfect to play soccer. This is beautiful. The wind, the winds uh, died down. It's not really anything going on. We were supposed to get some rain, but I, uh, the meteorologists were wrong in there. We're going to get the rain at 5.35, right when we're leaving. That's a good ball. New Canaan attacking here. Emma Shu in the near side corner. That's a gonna be a tricky ball to defend. And here's Fiore will gather it. Yeah, I think New Canaan have started out a little better than a little better than Darianne, which is interesting. Darian's got to do a slightly better job just hanging on to the ball. Right now, giving the ball away a little too easily. Again, another ball out wide. Ozemek, the cross. She'll be a little disappointed with yeah. that. That's a, that was a great ball. And again, I think this is, this is. I mean, you can hear Liam Mike. It's going to be up to Darian's fullbacks and outside midfielders. Right now, the outside midfielders are not helping the outside back, so the gap is massive. And on this field... If, they, if New Canaan keeps playing these balls in behind, it's, it's going to be a matter of time before they start to get some chances and score. John, how different is it to play on a grass field like this? I mean, most FCAC teams now play on turf. Yeah, I mean, it's completely different. We played our last two games at Ward and Staples, and we handled it well. Both turf, or both yeah, grass fields, right? Yeah. It's, um, and both beautiful fields, especially uh, Ward, Loff Loffler Field's a nice field. Staples were gorgeous. Ward was... Awful. Awful. Because the, the poor coach, the irrigation system is broke, so they've let him hang out to dry. It's just brown. But uh, this, this field's gorgeous, but also big. Yeah. That's another good corner. That's a good turn. Well defended there by Nell Niffin. Nell Niffin, the... Uh Ninth grader, only a freshman. Two nice defensive plays that time. Can she clear it out? She's ju she's she's jumped into the starting lineup, um, and she's she's playing very well. Any time a freshman can <coughs> break into a starting varsity lineup, that takes a special talent. 
action at midfield here. Solger. Again, a little bit too tentative again by Darian, which is, you don't hit, say that very often. Talk about Lauren Solger. She's had a nice season as well. Yep, she's, she's had a very, very steady season, been very reliable, done her job. And as I say that, she gives the ball away. Only a junior. She'll be back next season. And again, if we look, Nukainen looking at wide again. I think that's going to be the theme today. Put crosses in the box. Take away Darianne's strength, which is the center backs. And if Darianne's not careful, in the, it's going to cost him in a minute. Nukainen started the first 20 minutes. By far the better team today. Which is tough because Darianne, I said, has come off a really hard game against Staples. They're obviously missing Katie Ramsey up top, but right now Ellen can't do too much because Han is simply not getting the ball up there. It has been a rough stretch for the Blue Wave, and in terms of wins and losses, they've came, come out of it very nicely. You wonder if maybe a, a, a little bit of fatigue has uh, factored in as they start this game against their rival. Yeah, the, the, the way their schedule's made up, it... it it, it hurts you because they have obviously a lot of the easy games in the beginning. And then in this stretch, I think they played very well in this stretch and got some great results. And sometimes it's the results that count. But there'll definitely be some tired legs out there. Not to mention it's that time of the season as we approach the postseason. This is a team in Darien that certainly uh, has a chance to make some noise in the postseason, John. Yeah, I th and I think that'd be one of the reasons that I think if this was a postseason game, I think you'd probably see Katie Ramsey out there today. I think with her knee bothering her a little bit and the the result they had on Monday, you may see her, but I think it'll be sparingly. Maybe we'll see her for 10 minutes here and 10 minutes there, but I think it's a, a wise move to keep her out today. Because Darianne's safely in the top eight. Hopefully they can lock up a home game and be in the top four. But the most important thing is having her healthy for two weeks' time. Yeah, these last uh, three games for Darianne have certainly made them look really good as we head into the uh, postseason. FCAC tournament will be here before you know it. The fall is the longest, shortest season of your life. Yeah, yeah. That's a good way. Well put, John Bradley. This is her pace that's going to hurt you here. That's a good shot. Well done by Chrissy Fiore in goal. Nice save by Chrissy Fiore. Emma Shu, the shot on goal. But again, as I said, as I was saying before, they're not going to, they're looking to take Emily Denanzio out of the game. And what I mean by that is work around her. They're not going to take the ball straight into Emily Denanzio because she's simply just too good. They're going to make someone else defend and someone else do a job. That's a good ball by Bravo. And the ref's in the way. And possibly today, I mean, you, you might see Darianne switch up their formation at halftime because I think... In this version of Cat and Mouse, where both teams are playing in the 4 5 1 shape, Nukane have got the slight edge. I think if Darianne could play with two forwards, they could definitely get Nukane under more pressure. And we won't discuss the US men's national team today either. You know, it's so funny. I was just going to bring that up to you, John. I was just going to bring that up to you. Happened to catch uh, Taylor Twelman on ESPN, and boy, did he give it to the US. And men's national team. They deserved everything he gave them. In case you don't know what we're talking about, the U.S. men's national soccer team failing to qualify for the World Cup for the first time since 1986, yeah, I believe. 86. Disappointing. Yeah, I mean, all they had to do was go to the worst team in the group and get a tie, and they would have been fine. But yeah, they right. somehow managed to lose. Right. Again, another wasted ball there by Darianne. Again. It's hard because you play so many difficult games that, again, this is to be expected. Every now and again, you're going to come out flat. I think for Darianne at the moment, it's a good thing that it's... It's a good thing that it's 0-0. Zero, zero. There's been no damage done so far. And with Darianne's attacking talent, we could... We could get an attack and score at any time.
We're at the midway point of the first half between Darien and New Canaan High School varsity girls soccer. No score in this one. Rivalry Wednesday here on the DAF Media Network. DAF Media will be broadcasting uh, your match tomorrow with New Canaan at home. Hopefully we can uh, get win number two tomorrow. Yeah, that was a quality win over Staples, John, earlier this week. I mean, the kids know. The, kid, the kids are excited. They're, they're ready. And I said, they're, it's a different mentality because they have the ability to win out. And if they do, we get to keep playing. You have a lot of young players on your team. And I was just looking at uh, Nell Niffin and Kate Bellissimo. And Lucane is fairly similar. There's a bunch of young players on the roster, and they've got a great group of young freshmen coming through as well. That's a nice throw. Kate, Kate, by Emma Kate Bellissimo and Nell uh, Niffin, two freshmen, seeing some valuable minutes this afternoon for the Blue Wave varsity girls soccer team. Yeah, they're, they're both very, very, very solid players that have contributed valuable minutes throughout the season. New Canaan actually on a bit of a roll here lately. I mentioned they were 5-3-3. Three, and three. They've won their last two games, a 2-0 win over Norwalk and a 3-1 win over McMahon. Yeah, the, and that the, is a huge win the, for the Rams. The McMahon was a great win. As I said, Rich went back to his... Uh, is old school and got, and got a nice result. Yeah, Rich Hickson, New Canaan second year head coach. He had all sorts of positive things to say about a player you like very much. And that of course is Peyton McNamara of Brian McMahon, a sophomore, one of the top players, certainly offensive players in the FCAC. Yeah, I was talking to her as well the other day and uh, it, it's, it, she gave an interesting perspective that she's also <laughs> Like a lot of these kids, tired. It's an unbelievable right. amount of games right. in a short space of time. I mean, yep. our boys' team, our last game is Monday the 23rd. We've got five games between tomorrow. So five games in ten days. It's just too much on the body. I mean, the way this season is created, 16 games in six weeks is definitely too much in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of games. And then, of course, the... Uh, the teams that fare well have the postseason. That's why it's so difficult to make a run, especially in the state tournament. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it, you find a lot of teams that do well in their, in soccer at least, in their league playoffs, sometimes losing the state tournament. Looks like Katie Rams is getting ready to come on. My prediction was right that we might see her for five, ten minutes here, five, ten minutes there. Be interesting to see how the knee holds up. It's... Natalie. If my brain's still working, it's it's her left knee. Natalie Bravo, the free uh, free kick. Well defended that was that by Darren. First time I've actually got it to Ellen Harnish's feet. It's a good ball out wide. There's Kate Bellissimo, far sideline. But the great thing that Harnish does is Harnish very, very, very rarely wastes the ball. So again, it's frustrating for her up there when she can't get it to her feet. But when she does, she can link up well with the outside players. And the way this game's going so far, I could see this being a similar one to Monday where what, just one goal could take this game from either team. The horn sounds, and here comes Katie Ramsey into the game. She checks in, and Kate Bellissimo checks out for the blue wave. Katie Ramsey wearing those neon green cleats. She must have seen those ones on TV somewhere. <laughs> you see a lot of fluorescent cleats, John, nowadays. 
Very colorful on the soccer pitch. Mine were old school black and white. Yeah. I didn't play soccer, but my uh, baseball cleats were it's a good black ball. and white as well. Alana Dome might be looking to get a shot off here. You know, as I look up and down this Darien lineup, a lot of juniors, a couple of freshmen. Lee Parsons certainly has building blocks for the future. Oh, I think I think the these two teams out here, the Darien New Canaan. It's a little too far out there. Both both these two teams have unbelievable young talent coming through. I think you, these are going to be two of the top teams for the next few years. As I said, New Canaan's freshman class and is exceptionally strong. That's going to be a difficult ball. If you're looking for oh, the goalie, didn't come off a line there. And Jordan Patterson picks it up. And Darianne in blue. Moving from right to left. New Canaan in white with the red letters moving from left to right. The last couple of minutes here, we've seen the action shift a little bit into New Canaan's half of the field as Darianne's offense yeah, I think attacking what, a little bit more. Yeah, I think what we've seen is, like I mentioned earlier, about hanging on to the ball. Darian's had a much better job in that in the last five minutes, which means it's tough on this big field to maintain and re sorry, regain possession. So it's very, very important that you possess the ball and make the other team do the work on here. Because I said I've been many games on here where the longer the game goes and you can keep it a close game, you can always nick the winning goal. Here's Bravo. That's a good ball by Bravo. Ramsey. And she seems to be moving okay, as I said. I was just going to say the same thing. Doesn't seem to be favoring that no. left knee much at all. Again, as I said, I would imagine they'd be looking to get maybe 10 minutes each half out of her, see if she can get a goal. Bravo, the throw in here. It's another good throw. Exactly what Darianne will be looking for. If they can't get the flick on, corner is next best. Bravo to take the corner kick here. With 12-10 left in the first half between Darianne and New Canaan. Goes out of bounds near the near post. And another corner opportunity for the Blue Wave. And New Canaan's defense clears it out. That's a good ball back from Niffin at the good header. That's what you'd call a chip shot, right? Niffin's ball there. Just like golf. Yeah. Yep. Get it up, get it back in. Yep. That's what yep. Emily Bergel should we're looking to do. It's a good ball back into Ramsey. Nice save by Jordan Patterson, the junior keeper from New Canaan. Ramsey with a shot on goal. You know, I wanted to go back to your Ithaca days for a moment. You started there playing soccer, correct? <coughs> yeah, freshman year. And then, then, uh, and then I hurt you my ankle. Hurt, you hurt your, hurt your ankle. Took a couple years off. Lived the American dream in college. <laughs> well, Ithaca is a nice place to live the Is American it? dream. <laughs> I spent 
many a day out there myself. My first job in broadcasting was in Elmira, which is right down the road. It's great until you get the nice breeze off the lake in the mm -hmm. middle of January. Yep. You learn to walk backwards. Yeah, that lake effect snow is not, uh, not ideal, to say the least. I'll take these nice breezy full days any day. Yeah. It's been an interesting fall as the last couple of falls have been some really hot, warm days and some days like this where it's just beautiful. Nice breeze. Okay. Looks like, a, oh no, she kept it in. Don't worry, I've got my winter jacket ready for the playoffs. <laughs> It'll be here before you know it. Ramsey that stays on the in. Ramsey will be looking line. to take this on, on herself. Well, again, it's kind of difficult because if you look again, like I was saying earlier, there's four New Canaan players and just Katie Ramsey up there. I think Darianne's got the ability to open this game up and maybe play with two forwards in the second half. Be interesting to see what Liam might decide to do. And that, that's just too easy for Darianne to defend. You're not going to beat Anna Fox or Emily Denunzio just by pumping balls down the middle. They're too good too strong and under, understand the game too well. We're under 10 minutes left here in the first half of this one between Darianne and New Canaan. No score. Both teams have had some opportunities, haven't been able to capitalize. And it is nil-nil in this FCAC rivalry game between the Blue Waves, Blue Wave and the Rams. Another good throw, well defended. Just as we say that, the nice wind's kicking up. Unfortunately, we have to bring you this game tape delay. Our live stream was not up and working when we went on the air with this broadcast. Had some technical difficulties. So thanks for joining us. A great cross. Another corner to Darianne. Darianne now with another corner on the far side of the field. And it'll be taken by Natalie Bravo. The junior, number two for Darianne. This could be the first goal. Well defended there by Nakanum. Ellen Harnish was in close, had a look, but Darianne managing to clear it away. There's a lot of bodies in there, and that's exactly what you need to do is just prevent that ball from getting on target. Ellen Harnish almost picking up her 16th goal of the season. Here's Bravo, near sideline. That's a good turn. Well tackled there by Sophie Potter. And again, that'll frustrate Rich, the New Canaan coach, does a great job there. And But again, New Canaan, Zoe Jones will be looking to do better on the ball than just whack that out of bounds. And I think New Canaan stepped up a little high here. I think this this is going to clear them all and go straight to Ramsey. Bravo usually takes the throw-ins. She takes the corners. And the free kicks. And the free kicks. It's the Bravo show. This again is going to clear them all. I think this is going to go hit Katie Ramsey. Darian doesn't seem to have anyone in the box. It's a good header. I was completely wrong. Well defended there by Nukano. Ilana Dolan to Bravo. Here's Ramsey up. And it's cleared by Carolyn Shu. Great work there by Solgar. If she can just pick her head up. Well done there by the keeper.
Jordan Patterson, New Canaan's keeper, the junior. Julia Ozimek upfield for New Canaan. There's Braden Dial at midfield, number five for New Canaan. Back pass to Caitlin Sparks. Catherine Reese fighting for it along the far sideline for New Canaan. Just getting down to five minutes left here in the half. Both teams will be looking not to concede here in the next five minutes. Under five minutes left in the first half, no score between Darian and New Canaan. Damian Andrew alongside John Bradley, the Darianne boys soccer coach, coming off a big win over Staples earlier this week. Hopefully I'll be telling you tomorrow that we're coming off a win against the Canaan as well. And of course, uh, DAF Media will be broadcasting that game from Turf 2 on the Oval on the campus of Darianne High School. That is really a beautiful facility. Do you know yet if you're going to play at Turf 2? Or you we will play? be, we you will, will be. be. Okay. Yeah. You've decided, I know when we uh, exchanged emails the other day, you were uncertain of that. You thought it might be on turf one. We're, we're sticking with plan A. Yep. It's free kick in a dangerous position here to New Canaan, which I can't see. <laughs> Not ideal here. Braden Dial will take the free kick for the I think Rams. she's going to be lining up to take a shot here. And just over, the, well, over say the just over the bar. Look more like a field goal than a soccer <laughs> shot. Sails over the crossbar. Now, with that that was a direct kick? Yeah, we have some. I mean, it's, it, from the coach's point of view, we, we had a bunch of them yesterday. They're wasted opportunities because all you want to do is get that ball on goal. So you can make the keeper have to make a save because it's sometimes they they don't make the right save and you get a rebound. So again, that'll frustrate the coach because you don't get too many free kicks in those areas of the field. So you've got to look to make the most of those. That's well done there by Canaan. Braden Dial been very impressive in midfield. And you told me the rain wasn't coming, and it looks like the sprinkles were on the way. We need to get our uh, equipment under some. Two twenty five left in the first half. Got some sprinkles, got some raindrops. Which I did not plan for. Nope. Nor did I, nor did our equipment. <laughs> well played there by Harnish. Again, Sophie Potter, very, very, very solid defender. I've had the privilege of coaching her outside of here, and she's done a real good job in the centre midfield today, not letting Darianne really play or create much from the centre midfield. Natalie Bravo, near sideline in the corner. She'll throw it in. It would be, one a, good, one be a good time to get a go. Taking her time here to make sure she gets this exactly where she wants it. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, the ref's got that right with the, the high kick there. It's actually very, very, very well defended. Sometimes it's, it hurts in there, but you've got to be brave, but that was very good by Nukainen. Last minute of the half here. Again, both teams just be looking to take this in without conceding the goal. Although Nukainen back on the attack. Again, that would be frustrating, and that's a little bit of inexperience. I said Emma Shu, great player, lot to learn, and again, Playing that ball straight into Emily Denunzio is not going to help you. 
Well, as you can see, Darian straight back on the attack. Well headed there by Niffin. 30 seconds left in the first half between these two FCAC rivals, Darianne and New Canaan. On, New 20 seconds here, and I think that'll just about do it. Did not expect the raindrops, John. Well, it feels just like England, so we're good. <laughs> and again, overall, it's I, been a... Uh, I know I can always count on you for an English quip. I think that's what they brought me in for. <laughs> and that'll do it for the first half here from Connor Field in New Canaan. No score between Darianne and the New Canaan Rams. FCAC Varsity Girls Soccer matchup. We are going to take a quick break and we will be back with second half action.
We are back here on the DAF Media Network from Connor Field in New Canaan. The uh, Darianne Blue Wave taking on the New Canaan Rams High School Varsity Girls Soccer. Damian Andrew alongside John Bradley. No score as we start the second half between these two FCAC rivals. Yeah, I mean, it was a fairly... We've seen a lot of the games this season. I think this is the fifth or sixth one we've done together. It's a fairly... I mean, both teams cancelled themselves out, and I think that was a lot to do with they're both playing the same formation, so that's a great throw into the box. It'd be interesting to see in the next few minutes. I mean, Katie Ramsey, Damian's taking a little chance. She's, she's back out there. I thought we'd see a little less of her today. Um, so Darianne may have switched to a 4-4-2. We'll soon figure it out in the next couple of minutes. But they know that they'd have to do something slightly different in order to get a little bit more pressure on the New Canaan defence. It's a good header. This could be tricky. Well done there by Harnish. So an opportunity there for the Blue Wave early in the second half. We are just underway. Damian Andrew, John Bradley, our producer Brendan Ross joining us, and Ben Olson doing a fine job on camera. Fine DAF job holding the umbrella above our heads. Oh. DAF Media, Brendan Ross doing a fine job holding the umbrella as the uh, we've had some raindrops this afternoon. Again, I see this being a one-goal game. I think the team that can sneak that first goal and get a half chance is, is going to lock this game up. We talked a little bit about two of the freshmen on this Blue Wave team, Kate Bellissimo and Nell Niffen. How big is that for them to get some valuable minutes here and some meaningful FCAC games yeah, late in the season? I think it's, number one, it's, good for, it's obviously good for their confidence. And number two... Like, we played yesterday with a lot of underclassmen against Staples who have got some very good players. And the advantage they have, they don't fear anyone because they don't know who they're, they're up against. They don't know the, the level of player that they're marking, the level of player who's on the other team, whether they play at a top-level premier, whether they're going to college. They just go out there and play. So, like, Nell Niffin in that first half was excellent. And she was just winning every tackle, using the ball. So she's kind of fearless in there, and it doesn't it doesn't phase them who's playing for the other team. I think Darianne and Natalie here are going to be looked to play this towards the left of the wall. That could be a goal. All good save. Nice save. I don't, I don't think that was her intention there, but it turned out to be a decent shot. Yeah, nice save there by uh, Jordan Patterson, the junior keeper for the Rams. Off the direct kick from Bravo. Looks as though Darianne's come out in the same 4-5-1 with Ellen Harnish out on the left and Solga out on the right. And Lucanen just the same again back in there, 4 5 one. John, you mentioned in the first half, we were talking a little bit about the uh, U.S. men's national team. Where do they go from here? The only way is up. Yeah. <laughs> can't really go anywhere else. I mean, it was, uh, I said, shocking yesterday. I said all they needed to do was get a tie. I think he got the lineup a little bit wrong, and uh, he panicked when he brought Dempsey off the bench, and uh, they almost got a tie out of it, but I think they've got a lot of rebuilding to do. Bravo, the corner It's a great kick. corner. Alana will be looking to get that back out to us. A good ball. Well, I don't think the grass field has made much of a difference today to Darianne. I think both teams have played well on it. Well, when I talked to Coach Lee Parsons before the game, Darianne's head coach, he said it could have a slight difference because they're used to playing on it but no excuses for us we got to be able to play on this you got to just make your passes a little crisper than you would on a turf field yeah i mean that was us i said our last two games being on the grass for the boys and it didn't it didn't make much difference in it in some ways we actually played better um as i said the slight difference here is this field is so wide that Darianne, I think, could do a better job utilising the width because I think the players with 
Ellen and Solga out wide on this side could definitely um, take on the New Canaan defence and have the beating of them. And again, New Canaan just falling for the trap there with Darianne just putting it straight down the middle. As I said, Anna Fox and Henry Denanzio just too good to be beat with simple balls into the forwards' feet. Just underway here in the second half. Darianne New Canaan, no score. John Bradley. Great crowd over here today as well. It's a really good uh, crowd today. Maybe one day they'll let us play under the lights. We will be covering your first ever home night game against uh, St. Joe's at Stadium Field. That should certainly be a thrill for some of your guys to play under those new lights on the campus of Darien High School. Yeah, that'd be a great experience next week. As I said, senior day under the lights. Um, hopefully we can get another win. And uh, we've got an interesting stretch coming up as well. It'll be interesting to see how we play and what we do tomorrow. That's a great ball to Ellen Harnish. Should we look at... Harnish couldn't put much on that. It's difficult on the grass as well. What you've got to do is get that first... Your first touch has got to get the ball out from under your feet. Then it makes it a lot easier to shoot. But again, New Canaan kind of doing the complete opposite to the first half. Darianne definitely on top here in this first seven minutes. New Canaan not using the width of the field at all. Here's Katie Ramsey. Again, good effort, but she's probably 30 yards from goal, so it's going to be a little difficult to beat. Patterson, the New Canaan keeper, who's very solid in there. Again, it's the same as Darianne, just doing it the other end. Catherine, Catherine, Catherine Reese there takes on Nell really well. Once you've beat the defender, so once she went round Nell Niff in there, she's got to take that on towards goal. That's a little too easy, just giving it back to the goalie. And yeah. this will be frustrating the New Canaan coaches a little bit that, as I said, when they're coming down the wings, they've got the ability to cause Darianne some problems every time they're going through the centre backs. Then they're not they're simply not going to cause any problems to Fox or Denanzio. And we've got a substitution here for the New Canaan Rams. Nora Bellado comes into the game, replacing Zoe Jones. You know, we were talking a little bit about Chrissy Fiore in the first half and what a season she's had, the senior keeper for Darianne. I was just watching her after that last exchange there. So focused when the ball is in her half of the field. Yeah, I think that's the She's main... the quarterback back there, right? She's yeah, barking she's... out the signals. And, it, and that fills the defence with a lot of confidence. I think she's uh, it's probably the most difficult position in, in any sport because you're involved so little. I think the average time that a keeper has the ball is less than a minute, which, I mean, you've got to stay focused, 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 and then you're on call to make a save. And, and days like today, she hasn't really had too much to do. But it's only going to take one break away from New Canaan, and she's got... She's got to stay focused, intense, and, and make that super save like she normally does. You gotta be That's good work by New Canaan there. Have to be impressed with this Emma Shue, the freshman number nine for the New Canaan Rams. New Canaan now with a corner opportunity. It'll be taken by Julie Ozimek, the senior, number 21 for New Canaan. That's a good ball. Great ball in the box. And the goalie kick coming up here for Fiore. No score between Darianne and New Canaan. Darianne in blue, New Canaan in white. See if my prediction holds true. Like I said a long time ago, when we started the broadcast, I just see this being a one-goal game. It's very, very tight. Both teams pretty much canceling each other out. 
but not too much work for the keepers to do. And as you mentioned, this is a always a big rivalry game between these two schools, but a lot of the players know each other. A lot of the players know each other from this, lacrosse, hockey, everything. I mean, it's a very, a lot of the kids have close relationships. Yep. <coughs> I think the refs uh, will take it, but I think uh, if this was a boys game, we wouldn't be seeing a free kick. Sometimes the refs called girls games very, very tight. They don't let them play. For me, that was just a shoulder to shoulder. But he doesn't really look too interested in what I have to say anyway, so I presume uh, he's not listening to me. <laughs> Free kick by Bravo. It's a good header there. There's Solger. Solger down into the corner. Nice That's cross. A good it's a good cross, but some nice calm defending there by Nukana. Chip shot over the defense. Again, like I said, Emily Denunzio, in my opinion, is the best outright defender in the league. That's just too easy. Braden Dial, though, with the interception there. And Fiore hauls it in. Nice save by Chrissy Fiore off the shot by Braden Dial. Dial, I guess you could say, was dialing in. Yeah, Denunzio is such an impressive defender. Yeah, she makes things look easy, as I said, and it's... I mean, her and Anna Fox in there have got great understanding. That's a great ball by Bravo Unlucky. Here's Harnish. Anna and Emily have a great understanding in there. That's well done by Solger. Here's Solger into the box. Ilana Dolan near sideline to Solger. To Bravo, That's and, well and she finds there. Dolan. That's great work there by Darian. Again, I think you can hear from the crowd behind me, they're not too overly impressed by the ref either. <laughs> again, it looked from here, again, not complaining, because I think Bravo will be looking to take a shot here. But again, they look like a good tackle. And the frustration will be that, in my opinion, when one ref is the furthest away, he should let the other ref make their decision. <laughs> but we won't be complaining if Natalie Bravo can put this in the back of the net. Free kick for Bravo. Again, another one that looked more like a field goal than a shot. And that was over the crossbar, right of the post. Interesting here with Katie Ramsey, maybe it's because Darianne doesn't have a game Friday that they're but not she's, really too worried she's about still out knee. there. Although, she, as you said in the first half, she doesn't seem to be favoring that uh, left knee at all. Yeah, I think they'll probably be looking at it from... I mean, she didn't, she didn't start the game, so it's obviously been bothering her. Um, fingers crossed today, it doesn't get any worse. But she doesn't, yeah, as you said, she doesn't seem to be favoring it. It seems okay. There's Denunzio, the header, across midfield. Harnish. Yeah. Well taken away there by Darian. Good defending again by Nukainen. Again, it's a... It's a long game of cat and mouse. Both teams cancel each other out. Both teams have had their opportunities, just have not been able to capitalize. Yeah, I mean... And, and this is really the type of, uh, not, not surprising, a Darian New Canaan game to be nil-nil with 25 minutes left yeah. in the uh, second half. Well, I think both coaches know what they're doing 
defensively is working. So as I said they're both sitting here with they're both sitting here with one forward. Um, but again, I mean obviously we've covered a lot of games this season. This is probably the tightest. I mean the shots that Patterson and Fiore have had to make in each goal have basically been from distance. So neither of them have really been tested. Unless I'm forgetting something, I don't really remember either goalie making any great saves today. No. But they're coming. I guess, if, I guess if you would call sa certain saves routine, maybe? I, I don't know. Yeah, I think what's coming is that the that soccer's a game of mistakes, and there will be a mistake that comes from one of these teams. And I'm slightly biased, so I hope it's New Canaan that will let one of these forwards in. But at the moment, it's difficult to see where it's coming from because neither coach wants to give an inch. So they're both persevering with their four defenders, five midfielders, and one forward which is making it difficult to break the other team down. Action on the far side of the field, the throw in by New Canaan. Safely out of bounds there. And a, another routine goalie kick by Fiore. Looks like the, the, the crowd are getting a bit lively here. Yeah, it is a great crowd. A little overcast now. The sky is a little ominous. Denunzio across midfield. There's Ramsey on the run out. And I said these games like this, it, it literally just takes one bit of quality or one mistake. And I think that's going to decide this game today. We're approaching the uh, midway point of the second half. No score in this one between Darianne and New Canaan. Darianne in the blue, New Canaan in the white. And New Canaan on the move here. That's a, oh, that's a great ball. And, and a great... And a great save so, by Chrissy Fiore. And again, like I said, it only takes one opportunity, and that'll be, you can see Rich Ix and the coach over there. I think he'd be frustrated by that, because if I got it right, I think that was Catherine Reese. It was Catherine Reese. And Reece. Catherine Reese, if she takes that on and passes that in the corner with a goal, we should have practiced over and over and over. A lot of kids, and I have it a lot, we, we practice it every day, and it still doesn't register. You're aiming to hit those low and into the corner with a goal. And shots that shots that high for Chrissy Fiore are just too easy for her to save. She makes them well, they're hard saves. She makes them look easy. You can see where the uh, that's another good save. We could see by the coach's reaction, he knew that was the one, the one chance that they were going to get because you're not going to get too many from Emily and Anna in the centre. I think he'll be hoping New Canaan don't regret that later on. She she did everything right until the finish. She took it down well. She used her skill well. She beat them. And all she had to do was the extra bit of composure. But Darianne will know they've escaped there. I think we're looking at a great last 21 minutes here. The pace has picked up a little bit, John. You can see that just over the last couple of minutes. Yeah, that... There's Emma Shue. Just a well there to win the ball back. And again, I'm wondering if we're going to see some tired legs here from either team. I said, Darian had a very hard game Monday against Staples. So going into the last 20 minutes of your second game in three days on this big grass field is tough. As we said, it's been a tough stretch for the Blue Wave. And they've played That's pretty well. That's a good well. ball back in, and she's not offside. Oh. Fiore was pit positioned I see well Kurt. there. I see Coach Richickson looking up to the skies there. So 
Lucanen on top. Again, they'll know they're not going to get too many chances. So I think hopefully Darian can make them regret those two misses. Emma Shu, the freshman, had a look. Just wasn't able to convert right of the post. These last five minutes, though, Lucanen definitely dominating the game. Yep. It's been played on Darian's side of the field. And another corner opportunity for the Rams. Julia Osmek, the senior, will take it. It's a great corner. And Denunzio kicks it out of bounds. Oh, I've seen, I've seen penalty kicks given for less. New Canaan in search of its third straight win, coming off wins over Norwalk and Brian McMahon. I think even looking back at Emma Shoe's chance, so that was a great ball over the top, and she definitely wasn't offside. If she'd have seen the other New Canaan player in the middle, she could have cut that ball back for easy tapping. So Darianne living on the edge here, but with the attacking talent Darianne's got, with the likes of Ramsey and Harnish and Dolan and Bravo, definitely going to be opportunities for Darianne to score here. They're going to just try and get a little foot on the ball and slow this game down for a few minutes. As you said, though, moments ago, this uh, last five, six, seven minutes has been uh, dominated by the Rams. But I think ultimately, with soccer, is a game that goes in spurts. If Darian yep. just gets one opportunity, everything New Canaan's done in that last six, seven minutes is wasted. Well said. They didn't take the opp they didn't take the opportunities they hadn't. You don't often get two one v ones against Christine Fiore with the quality of the Darian defence. So if you're asking me, I think Darian's going to make him regret this. I predict a Darian 1-0 win. <laughs> and I predict England's going to win the World Cup next year. John Bradley always willing to give a prediction here on the DAF Media Network. Brendan Ross has the umbrella up Again, some raindrops here. As I said to you at halftime, we didn't expect this rain, and the equipment didn't expect this yeah, rain. Yeah, no, they, they've sneaked this up on us. I thought it was not going to rain until this evening. But again, it's nice if it holds off, because again, it's uh, definitely a few hundred people over here watching this game today. Yep. It's a good crowd here at Connor Field. Beautiful soccer field in New Canaan, behind Sachs Middle School, which is right across the road from New Canaan High School. Beautiful campus. There's Braden Dial on the move, on the attack for the Rams. That's well recovered there by Denunzio. That'll be New Canaan's ball. The throw in. Well done there by now, Niffin. The near bicycle kick by Braden Dial. But again, excellent work there by Anna Fox. Solger does a nice job to keep that in play. Denunzio at mid, or uh, Dolan at midfield. Yeah, Alana's had a very good, that's a good header as well. She's had a good game today. This is the one we were looking for, Ellen Harnish. That's a great but all well defended again. Ellen Harnish looking for Katie Ramsey. And they have been a force up front on offense for the Blue Wave all season. The top two goal scorers for Darianne this year. Ramsey and Harnish. 
And again, I think in this last 15 minutes, one of them is definitely going to get an opportunity here. And hopefully they take it. Natalie Bravo will throw it in on the near sideline, down in the corner. We're looking to flick this on in the box. It's a great throw. And that's the second best thing if you can't if you can't get a goal from it, a corner's next best. No score here under 15 minutes left in the game between FCAC rivals Darian and New Canaan. It's a great ball. And it fell to the one person he wanted to. Just got caught under her feet there. Just couldn't quite settle it, could Katie Ramsey. Here's Ramsey along the far sideline. Darianne, she'll throw it in. I think again, Darianne will be looking to launch this ball into the box. And to your point from earlier in this first half, now the momentum, if it momentum bounces, has... Oh, that's well defended. Momentum has shifted to Darianne. It's only going to take one opportunity here. We need to make New Canaan pay for missing those chances. There's Ilana Dolan. Great opportunity here for Bravo. Perfect distance. If she can just get on target. I think we could be looking at the first goal. Again, that's a confusion and here with the refs. And this doesn't this is a direct kick, correct? So yes. no touches here. Yep, yeah, he waited a long time to blow his whistle. Surprise. Katie Ramsey will take you have this the free kick the, here. Probably the first switch of the season, I think. With 13 minutes left, it'd be great if Katie Ramsey can get us a goal here. And just over the crossbar. Nice effort from Ramsey. Darianne comes up empty though. No score between Darianne and New Canaan. You're watching the DAF Media Network. Brendan Ross is our producer. Ben Olson on camera. John Bradley joining us again this afternoon for this one between girls soccer rivals Darianne and New Canaan. And again, you're right, it's been a game of spurts. New Canaan had Great opportunities there. Darian's been on top, and now that's not going to worry Emily Denanzio. The throw in by Denanzio, and here's Harnish down the near sideline. Twelve minutes to go here. You get the you get the feeling that there's a sense of urgency from both teams right now, especially Darianne, the way they've been pushing the pace the yeah, last both, couple of minutes. Both both teams will want to win this game. And like I said, when we started the broadcast, I, I visualized one goal taking this game, and uh, I think especially that we're just under 12 minutes left. If one team can sneak a goal, which I hope is Darianne, I think that that'll be all she wrote for the other team. It's another great throw. Eventually the frustration here from Dariana, but you, they've got to take advantage of one of these throw-ins or corners.
probably the 10th or 11th corner Darien's had today and eventually one of these has got to go in the back of the net. Let's hope this is the one. That's a great ball. Well, well defended again by Lucano. Great ball to the near post for Bravo. Lucano really struggling to clear this ball. Ramsey into the corner. Another throw for Darian. If we don't make one of these count soon, I think. So Darian keeps attacking here at the 10 minute mark of the, sec of the uh, second half. 10 minutes left in the game. One of these has got to count soon, otherwise Natalie Brother's arm is going to fall off. <laughs> There's Bravo over to Denunzio. Tracked down by Bellissimo on the far sideline. And that'll stay with the blue wave. Denunzio will throw it in. Or Bravo, I should say, will throw it in. Perfect time to get a goal with just around nine minutes left. It's a great throw again. Darian struggling today to win this first ball. McCain done an excellent job of defending these throw-ins. Bravo to throw it in again. And that was a bit of a swing and a miss. Well, it somehow worked out into a corner. <laughs> <laughs> and it works out into a corner opportunity for the Blue Wave. Bravo, of course, will take this corner kick. And I see a goal on the horizon. And this is a big set piece here for both teams as we uh, near the eight minute mark of the second half. John, she's looking to get that a little bit uh, more airborne, right? A little bit yeah. more loft. And again, it's a slightly wider field. Um, they may have been practicing a little bit on who they're aiming for, but I think this one will really look to be high and into the middle of the box. Instead, it's low, and I'm completely wrong. This could be a great goal. Oh, that'll wake you up. Bergwall. And Kendall Patton took one off the side of the face there for New Canaan. And it's constant pressure now from Darian. Yeah, constant pressure here on offense from the Blue Wave. And if that bounces, they could be in trouble. Harnish fighting for it there in the box. New Canaan really struggling to clear the lines. Poor decision there, giving that straight to Ramsey. And that rolls over the end line. That's a lucky slate for New Canaan. Played a little bit too much around their own box there. And New Canaan uh, with a substitution here at the seven minute mark of the second half. Emma Shu comes back into the game. I think the ref is not having the best day of his career to be fair. Again, we'll take anything we can get, but that was definitely a throw to Nukaina. The throw goes to Darianne. Bravo throws it in. And Darianne retains possession. Another throw in here from Natalie Bravo. Nice throw in. And Nukaina clears it away. Emerson's speed could be in trouble here. If Emerson can get this out from under her feet and go towards goal, again, it's and it's over exactly the and you, and again you can see the reaction of the coaches, and that's the now lucky for Emerson. 
she's going to be playing on uh, one of our CFC club teams this year and uh, we can break those bad habits. She's got so much speed that if she'd have taken that directly to goal, I think Nukana would be one up now. John, what are you looking to do on a breakaway situation like that? Kick the ball out in front of you and, and, and yeah, her first it? Her first touches were excellent. She got the ball right out from underneath her feet, which was, which was very good. But it's such a difficult angle to score from. And another free kick opportunity here for New Canaan. Braden Dial will try to dial one up here. I think she's going to be aiming for uh, aiming for the goal here. That's a good shot. Oh, great and a save. great save by Chrissy Fiore for the Blue Wave. Yeah, yeah. Great save by Fiore. She timed that perfectly. perfectly. Yeah, that's what she does that makes things look easy, and that's what I was saying about Emma Shu. Emma Shu is an outstanding freshman, and if she could have just taken that closer, it's a great corner again by Nukainen. Oh, we can't see anything. There's bodies everywhere. And now, Nukainen attacking. Yep, New Canaan back on the attack here. You are absolutely right. You said it so perfectly. Soccer is a game of spurts, and we have seen that in the second half. It has been a bit of a seesaw contest in the second half, back and forth. Each, each team's definitely had their opportunities. I think New Canaan have had the best two or three chances. We're getting boxed out here by the uh, New Canaan student body. If this goes in, uh, I think we're going to see a pitch invasion. <laughs> That's it. And Ellen blue. Harnish Great clears job that away. Great job defending there by the blue shirts. But again, I've been very, very impressed by Emma Shu here today. Just a freshman. Caused lots and lots of problems for the Darian defense. You know, I tell you, a lot of good young players in the FC Act, John. Oh, the... the in, in girls soccer. Some, some phenomenal young talent on the field. Going to be an interesting last three minutes here. Again, Darianne may get an opportunity to score still. And like I said earlier, the size of this field, it, 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 the change in the momentum. Because one, once you're in that attacking third, if you don't clear the ball properly, it, it, it's really hard to recover. But I won't complain if Darianne get a goal in the next three minutes, that's for sure. We're under three minutes left in this one. No score between these FCAC rivals. Again, Darianne great run there. Emma Shue's going to be in again. Here's Shue. That's a, now that's another great touch. Again, say, same thing. But as I said, lucky for her, mark my words, I'm going to turn her into a superstar. That one again, if she takes one touch there, she's going to be facing Fiore 13, 14 yards from goal. It's just too far out with the goalie of Fiore's talent to trouble her. Yeah, a little too far out she takes that. But, but again, what she took that ball down, fantastic. Again, she's going to be in again. She's causing Darian all sorts of problems. Another great shot. Off the post. Great shot. Off the far post, Emma Shu, the freshman, has come alive here in Outst the last uh, two minutes of this one. Outstanding last few minutes. Under two minutes left, the goalie kick here from Fiore. Still plenty of time for either team to sneak a winner. And again, back, Darianne could be back on the attack here. Not sure the ref knows what's going on, to be fair. Again, Nell Niffin going to need to do some defending here. Oh, he's... What? This ref... No comments, no comments. I promised on my broadcast I'd never comment on the ref. No idea what. That could carry through through to Patterson there. Patterson. I'm not sure why he stopped the game and pointed to the ball. Sometimes refs are in the way. Just let the game flow, let the kids create, create things and enjoy the game. And again, we'll good have ball out wide. one second here. We will be uh, live streaming 
the Darien New Canaan boys soccer match tomorrow afternoon from the campus of Darien High School. This is a really good ball back over the top. If MSU can get on the end of this again, New Canaan could get one more chance. Well done by Emily Denunzio. Here's Emily Denunzio on the far sideline. The urgency now, 35 seconds left. New Canaan will be looking to pump this in if they can. Well won back by Darien. I believe that was your phone, John. It's a, it's a, piece, of, it's a piece of delivery person. <laughs> We're under 20 seconds left in what has been an entertaining soccer match this afternoon between these varsity Still time for Katie school. Ramsey to get a breakaway. And I think that's all she wrote. I think New Canaan will be the more disappointed there. They had three or four fantastic chances to win the game. Barry Ann, tired legs. Good result at the end of a tough week. Yeah, I was just going to say, good result at the end of a tough week between, or for uh, Darianne, coming off some uh, big, big wins, a big win over Staples, but a uh, nil-nil tie in this one between Darianne and New Canaan on an overcast afternoon from Connor Field. And John, your uh, final impressions of this game this afternoon? I think that. Again, it's, it's, it's hard on the legs, all these games. I think Darianne, today, lucky to escape uh, with a draw. I think the formations both teams played. I mean, Emma Shue up top caused a lot of problems. New Canaan definitely had the better chances. But again, it's another point for Darianne to push for that top four, which is a main priority of trying to lock up a home game in the playoffs. Yeah, Darianne has set itself up nice as we approach the postseason. Uh, they go to... 9-2-2, two, and two. New Canaan goes to 5-3-4. and four. John, it's been a pleasure. We will be doing your game tomorrow afternoon from Darien. Good luck against uh, your rivals, New Canaan. Well, I hope we score and they score none, and that would be the perfect result. <laughs> well, you had a big win already this week in uh, Staples. So uh, for John Bradley, Brendan Ross, and Ben Olson, I am Damian Andrew. Darian and New Canaan play to a 0-0 draw this afternoon. This has been a production of the Darian Athletic Foundation. Have a great night, everybody.